when Figma introduced their new UI, I was a little bit skeptical. No, I was really skeptical about using it because it was a totally new interface. So what I tended to do was to go back to the previous UI. But today, I'm more versed with the interface. I know my way around. And I thought that it would be a good idea for me to come and share exactly where some of these tools are currently hiding. But before we get to that, I think it would be a good idea for us to visit the previous UI. So you notice that this panel has even changed. So I'll just click on go back to previous UI. Now, when we look at the interface, we have our top bar. We have our design tools here. We have the title of the Figma file, the multiplayer tool, the share button, dev mode, libraries icon. We have the present mode here. We have a left panel with a layers and assets panel. Then we have a right panel with a design and prototype tab. Now that we've seen what our previous UI used to look like, let's go back to our new UI. So I'm going to click on use new UI. Now we are back to our new UI. I'm going to start with the left panel or the left sidebar. So with our left sidebar, we have a main menu here. A main menu, you can carry out specific actions, quick actions. We have the recent actions I've carried out on Figma. We have the design tools. And we have our AI tool, so you can write and rewrite content here. You can shorten content, you can translate. And we have our image editing, so you can now remove backgrounds and you can make an image from here. So these are all AI tools that you can use while you're working. Now, still on our main menu, we have a file item where you can create new files. You can place an image, you can save a copy, you can view version history, you can export frames, and you can create a branch, but this is mainly for organizations. We have edit, view, we have object, text, arrange, vector, plugins, so you can access your plugins, widgets, preferences. So currently, we have a UI being light gray. I really don't usually use it like this. I think that with the new update, it changed it. So I want to change my theme. Make sure you go to preferences, come to theme, and I'm going to use the dark UI. So I like the way it looks now. I'm going to go back to our main menu. And we have a libraries, we have help and account. So if you want to access any of the help tutorials or help articles, then you can click on help and account and you're going to access it from here. Still on the left panel, we have the title of the Figma file that used to be somewhere around here. So I'll just call this design tutorial. enter and we're going to go down to the file and asset tab so file on the file you can find the pages you can add new pages here then if you add any elements to your canvas it's going to be added to the layer so let's create one element i'm just going to go back to the design panel then we're going to click on let's go to the ui here we're going to click on the frame tool and i'm going to add a desktop frame simple so it's added to our layers section now under the assets any item you add to your components library any component you create is going to be added to the assets section so you can search for your components from where you have the search or libraries input control and here we have the theme library so from here any library you've created and you're shared with your team is going to be accessible from here if you want to minimize the ui so you don't want the panel, these panels to distract you while you're working. All you need to do is to come and click on where you have minimize UI and it's going to hide the UI. You see the way this also changed, but if you want it to be visible, you just need to click again and it brings it back. Now, the next thing we are supposed to be looking at is our design tools. Our design tools are supposed to be somewhere around here, but they have been moved to a horizontal bar floating at the bottom of the Figma interface. So we have a move tool, we have the hand tool, we have scale, we have a frame, we just added a frame, we have a section, we have slice, we have a shape tools, we have a pen and pencil tool, we have a text tool, comments, and we have the actions just like what we had here. You can also access it from a horizontal bar here. Then finally, we have our dev mode. So our dev mode used to be somewhere around here, but this is it. So if you want to switch to your dev mode, you just need to click on the toggle and it takes you to the dev mode. So this is going to be accessible for those who have a pro account. But if you don't want to use this and you want to leave the dev mode, you just need to click again on the toggle and it takes you back to the design mode. So we are done with our design tools. 
Now we'll go to our right panels. We have a multiplayer tool where you can present to collaborators by spotlighting on yourself. We have a present and preview icon here. Then we have a share button. So if you want to invite people to collaborate with you, either edit or you want to copy a link to your prototype, a link to your Figma file, this is where you're going to be able to do all of that. Now, still on our right panel, we have a design and prototype tab. The actions on the design tab are going to change based on the element that is selected on your canvas. So currently we have a desktop frame that is selected. You can manipulate the positions. You can manipulate the layout. You can change the width and the height. You can clip content. You can change the appearance, opacity. You can change the corner radius. You can change the fill. You can add a stroke. You can add effects. So this is what I wanted to show you. When you hover over an effect, you see the way it gives you a preview of how the effect is going to look like. Yeah, that is another good update that was added to the new UI and the new user experience of Figma. So we have layer blur. You can add the background blur. You can add layout grids. You can add grids. You can add columns. You can add rows. And you can export your frame or export your elements on your canvas. So now that we have visited the design panel, the next thing is a prototype panel. So this is just basic. For those who have been creating prototypes, this is where you can create your working prototypes, add interactions, add starting points, decide on the scroll behavior, and you can choose or change your prototype settings depending on the kind of device you want to use. For example, if you want to use a MacBook or if you want to use a simple laptop view or if you want to use a mobile view, you want to use, let's say, an iPhone, this is where you're going to change all the devices. And this is going to take effect only when you're previewing your prototype. So we have visited a design prototype and now I wanted to do one last thing. I'm going to turn off the layout grid. Come to layout grid, I'm going to turn it off. And I wanted to add some basic shapes here because I wanted to perform some merge actions to the shapes. So we've added these two squares. I'm going to select both. If you want to create a union between these squares, before it used to be very visible, but now it's kind of hidden, you need to come to this icon where it says more actions, click on it, and you're going to go to the different actions that you can perform on the two shapes. So we're going to select union to merge the two. I'm going to undo. And we are going to go back again to the more actions and you can do an intersection. Now, let's say we have created this intersection and we want to create a component out of this intersection. What I'm going to do is to make sure that it's selected and this is where you can find the component icon. So you just need to click on it. Sometimes it's hidden for some reason. The first time I started using this, I faced difficulty finding the create component icon, but this is visible now. So whatever it is you add to your components library, you can access it from the assets tab here. You can search for it, especially if you have a lot of items in your components library. So I've performed an intersection action and we have also created a component. Now I'd like us to add a simple button so we see where our auto layout is hiding. So I'll just select the frame. I want to just move it around, I'm holding down the space bar to move this around. I'll just shift this. I'm going to select the text tool and just add a simple button. So we have a button text. Shift A to give this an auto layout. Our auto layout panel has appeared. Under this, we can add a vertical and horizontal padding. So we have a horizontal padding, which is padding left and right. You can change it. And we can add a vertical padding, which is the padding top and bottom. So we can change this to 40. And you can change the direction or spacing between the items within the element. So if we had more than one element, I'll just duplicate this. You can change the direction to vertical layout or to the horizontal layout, or you can wrap it so it goes to the next line if you want to add more than one. So I will just shrink this a little bit so you see it wrapping. And these are just a few things you can do on the auto layout. You can also change the alignment. This is where you manipulate the alignment. You can add a fill. You can add a stroke. You can change the colors. So these are just basic things that uh, in the new UI that used to be there, but they have modified the experience a little bit. So I think that is based on also the updates 
or maybe feedback that we have been giving to them. There are a few other things that have been added to the interface and to the experience, which I'm going to be covering later. But if there is something else that I did not cover yet and you want me to touch on it, leave a comment in the comment section. I'm going to be there and I'm going to see if I can create a tutorial for that. But till next time, don't forget to like, don't forget to share, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.